Make heads or tails of that uh, Warriors Timberwolves trade. Very rare that a 14 and 15 seed of a conference make a blockbuster, but uh, it appears to be uh, the clubhouse leader right now of the bigger eyebrow raiser, Howard, right? Yeah, I mean, listen, on the Minnesota side of it, there's no surprise at all. We've known that they were uh, in hot pursuit of D'Angelo Russell for some time, wanted to sign him last summer before he ended up going to the Warriors in that sign and trade deal. And D'Angelo Russell is tight with Carl Anthony Towns. He fills a need. He, you know, allows Gerson Rosas and, and his his crew, the new front office, to put a different kind of stamp on this team that has just been kind of, uh, you know, wandering the desert for the last few years and couldn't quite get traction. I have no issues on their side of it. On the Warriors' side of it, I just have curiosity. It's, you know, D'Angelo Russell signing was always a, a signing of convenience. You're losing Car- uh, Durant. He's agreed to do a sign-and-trade. You do a dual sign-and-trade, and you get D'Angelo Russell. Now you don't lose Durant for nothing. He's a placeholder. He could play with Curry or whatever. Uh, however you want to see D'Angelo Russell, you could have seen him as. Short-term, long-term, whatever. I do think it was inevitable they were going to trade him. I do think it was inevitable you would see a may move to try to maximize his value in, a, in another deal. Whether they got the best value is going to be the question going forward because Andrew Wiggins obviously was number one, uh, number one pick for a reason, but he's been a very frustrating player, a lot of talent, a lot of potential still four or five years into his career, but it's, it's not clear where, what his ultimate um, ceiling will be. And I think this is probably the Warriors having a vote of confidence in themselves. We will develop him better. We'll put him in a better context. And by the way, there's a huge difference between being Andrew Wiggins next to another young player like Towns trying to prop up a franchise that's been in a a bad way for a long time versus Andrew Wiggins going to a team that's won three championships with three Hall of Famers sitting there waiting for you to play with them and play a role, not have to be the guy who's carrying a franchise and has all of that on his shoulders. So you might see a very different Wiggins in that context. So I guess if I had told you when the Russell signing happened um, that essentially the Warriors, uh, in losing Durant, as we assumed they might, again, this is when I'm hitting the way back machine to last uh, June, right, that it would turn into Wiggins and a potential fourth overall selection, right, because it's protected up to number three for this coming draft, um, you'd, you'd say what? I mean, because that's basically what they've turned this into right here with the 2022 second-round yeah. pick understood. So Yeah. No, I mean, Rich, that's the right way of looking at it. And you would say that's fine. Just as we said, it was fine they got D'Angelo Russell because – Durant was going to leave regardless. So it's a matter of getting something instead of nothing. Now, Wiggins is coming with a big contract attached. And so there, you know, anybody who's, who's uh, a, a still a very you know, pronounced skeptic of Wiggins, of which there are probably many, justifiably, you might say, ah, that's not the best use of an outgoing Kevin Durant. But the pick, I think, makes it more palatable. And again, Wiggins is still young enough that if you feel really confident as an organization about your player development skills, your staff, your surrounding cast, it's different. Like, again, I, I can't stress this enough because we see it all the time in this league. A guy's drafted high and he just doesn't work out because all the expectations are on him in one place. And he's, you know, guys have talent, but they don't all have the right mental makeup to carry a franchise or they're better off really in the NBA being a number two or a number three. And it could still blossom into an all-star as a number two or number three. But if, if Wiggins really wasn't cut out to be a number one for the Timberwolves or a co-number one with Towns, it's, we're going to see, I'm convinced of this much, we will see a much different version of him with the Warriors. For more of the Rich Eisen Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV for free on BR Live or download the Rich Eisen Show app.